eager to add one or two of these patterns to your improvisational repertoire. The tutorials differ in quality and depth. Most of them are short basic explanations of the musical or pianistical structure. In some I show several additional exercises or how to add a cadence onto the sequences. In number 5, 7 and 8 I tell you a little story. The most interesting of these may be number 7 where I reflect on Chopin's relation to the Faubourdon schema. First example. This is the basic chordal block pattern, which is a chain of six chords shifted down a diatonic scale, which is in this case and for all following major examples in the key of G major. Now two efficient pre-exercises in which the role of the thumb is very important, so watch out and try to give this finger the lead in both of them. Now you can try to transpose this phrase into several keys. This one sounds pretty good when applied to harmonic minor, so try this as well. can change the right hand pattern to the left hand, which is a very convenient version of this schema. Number 2. Chromatic Faubourdons usually exploit exclusively major triads. The structure of this style is very simple. I just take the first inversion triad and shift it down the chromatic scale. You need to observe that the figurative pattern can be realized in two different versions. Version A and this one, version B. The main difficulty probably is to get the right hand fluid, so it might be a good idea to get the broken fourths right at first. This works out, put both hands together and practice to start from different keys. Example number 3 is very beautiful and easy to learn at the same time. This is a diatonic for Baudon beginning on the third degree of a major scale. 
I would start to practice the plain chordal version throughout the descending scale, which is an efficient exercise anyway if you are new to this kind of patterns. configuration is very simple and in my version I added a lower bass note on the downbeat. I first demonstrate the simple figuration and then add the lower bass note on the downbeat as second step. Now I go back to the chordal scaffolding and put the 7-6 chain on top. Now you can add the suspensions to the simple figurative pattern. A 6th chord chain can be left at any point. An easy way would be to leave when reaching the 4th degree, which then can be used as subdominant that indicates the following cadence, for example like this. Fourth example. This chromatic for Baudon pattern is based on this voicing. The first thing would be to internalize the grip and structure by moving it up the scale from different starting points. As second step you can practice different kinds of figurations. basically breaks up the chords in the order 3, 1, 5. In the actual example I changed this order in every second chord. In the following example I'm going to add a 4, 5, 1 cadence by taking the last sixth chord of the sequence as Neapolitan fourth degree of C minor. What follows is a prolonged tonic just the way I like it. Instead of a tutorial, I want to demonstrate how I invented this most unusual Faubourdon style by accident. What you see here is an excerpt from Mendelssohn's Prelude in E minor, the opener of his Opus 35 that I was playing around with as I sometimes try to improvise with figurative structures taken from original compositions, which can be a very good way to practice improvisation. As I knew I wanted to make a video on romantic Faubourdon styles, I was trying to apply a 7-6 chain onto this kind of figuration and what I had in mind was something like this. What I didn't notice for quite a long time was that I actually was adding a straight 9-8 chain which is a most uncommon way of decorating a Faubourdon, but to me sounded very pleasant and felt quite normal to the hands. I played this. Doesn't sound bad at all, doesn't it? But it's wrong. When I noticed that, I came to the idea just to mix them both up into a bigger alternating sequential structure because I know a composer that I'm convinced was sometimes working like this and that I'm going to reveal in a few seconds. The outcome is what you see here. 
As last step, I refined it by integrating this little highlighted passing tones to avoid the collision of hands where the 9-8 suspension take place. I'm pretty sure that the young Schumann invented a lot of his music exactly through this kind of procedure by trying to apply an established contrapuntal or harmonic schema onto his style of figurative diminution and structural refinement, but that he probably more or less just knew by ear or had a very vast concept of, but somehow regained it while improvising at the piano. So, the lesson of this story might be, don't know the schemata too well, because there seems to be a utopian potential in it. Number 6. A most famous version of this simple Faubourdon figuration can be found right at the beginning of Debussy's E major arabesque. It basically derives from the same chordal block pattern that I already use in the third style. A good starting point is, just like in the Debussy example, the sixth chord of the third degree, which is of course the tonic. example I added a third on top of each second chord and I was altering the diatonic scaffolding at one point which is always an option if you want to have a certain sound event. D became D sharp. One should of course transpose to any key and it's always good to practice how to add a cadence onto a sequence like this. For example, with the 451 cadence, like in the following little chorale, that you can take as a transposable example for practicing. What you see here is an excerpt from Chopin's Impromptu in A flat. The piece where I borrowed not just the sequential pattern but the whole figurative structure of the entire composed example and some might say I just stole it. And I'm of course guilty in all charges and I'm completely okay with that because I think it's a good way to learn from the masses models. Even if I don't have a very clear picture of Chopin's improvisational abilities, his preferred patterns, genres and styles, I can imagine him having a good stockpile of different Faubourdon types. And I think I've got good reasons that support this assumption. Firstly, he very likely internalized the basic concept already in his childhood. This is a page from a treatise by Chopin's older associate Karol Kupinski that was in use at the Warsaw Conservatory during the exact time of Chopin's education. It shows the most basic diatonic versions of the sixth chord chain schema slash Faubourdon, including its standard suspensions. Secondly, at least from my analytical experience, I assert a constant reappearance of the schema in all ages of Chopin's production. Thirdly, it appears to me that Chopin shows a certain use of this sequence, especially in works that reflect or evidently imitate an improvisational sphere, by the compositional structure or at least the title. Most obvious example, the mesmerizing epic standalone prelude Obus 45, where a very plain use of the model is combined with an improvisatory search for the actual tonic chord at its beginning. I picture him sitting down and still searching for the right position on the piano stool while already improvising such an intro. But the fourth and most profound reason is, most Faubourdons simply lie perfectly in the hands, sound pretty, are easy to include in all kinds of harmonic situations, and are relatively easy to transpose and to automize, primarily the chromatic ones, and therefore downright demand for improvisational use, especially the one that I stole from the A-flat impromptu. Here it is. On the left, the basic chordal scaffolding. On the right, the final diminution that consists of a simple arpeggio of the left-hand chords, plus a certain pattern in the right hand that includes a chromatic neighbor tone to the chord's fifth in the middle voice.
I leave the sequence by using the diminished 7th chord on the raised 4th degree that directly leads into a 5-1 cadence. Number 8. I was convinced to find a good for Vaudon example and Brahms music easily, but strangely enough, I couldn't find a single one. I find this somehow irritating, as he obviously had a certain favor for sequential schemata that stem from the Baroque era, especially voluptuous diatonic patterns like this lovely circle of fifths. Lacking a Brahmsian original for Bourdon's style, I try to invent one on my own that should include all the characteristic features of his original style, like the two against three rhythm, the wide left hand figurations and a certain contrapuntal spirit within the suspensions. On top of that, I constructed all that within an hemiola, a rhythmic phenomenon Brahms exploits over and over. I will lead you through this step by step, but I leave out the hemiola to keep it simple. Let's start with the right hand. Observe the chain of parallel thirds. The pinky always picks the octave and resolves it a step down when the thirds take a step up. Now break up the thirds. The left hand pattern just breaks up the sixth chords starting from the third degree of E minor. Final transposable exercise should of course include a cadence like this. Final example. Again, this is an original for Baudon that I borrowed from Chopin. It's from the most famous E minor waltz that he wrote as a youngster. I told you, just in this waltz you find even another example that would have been worth to be taken for this video. Instead, I choose the one that follows right after that passage as its variation. The basic module of this sequence looks like this. The bass descends by chromatic step, which is being harmonized as an alternating progression of a first inversion major chord and a diminished chord. When practicing to shift through the chromatic scale, the index finger is your anchor as it stays at the same place for each module whilst the outer voices move parallel. Same goes for the left hand. the sequence is chromatic, there are two different transpositions to learn, which maybe is not directly comprehensible, so I will exemplify this. The tone B can be either part of the consonant major chord or the dissonant diminished chord. If you want to automize this very nice sequence, which is at the same time relatively simple to transpose, you need to internalize the second transposition as well. Applying a figuration onto this voicing sounds already quite cool.
adding the left hand accompaniment should be easy now. When you want to include this sequence into an intact musical sentence, you need to exit per cadence. An easy way is to reach out for a cadential 6-4 chord as it works as a cadential signifier.